Here's your money briefing for Thursday, August 17th. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. Getting through the airport to make your flight is stressful enough. Adding to that frustration this summer, passengers reporting longer waits in the TSA lines. So what's going on? Wall Street Journal travel reporter Allison Poli looked into this and she joins me. So Allison, TSA is installing new scanners at TSA security points. How do they work? These are called computed tomography scanners, or CT scanners, and they're pretty similar to the ones that you might have seen in the medical context. So what they do is create a 3D image of your carry-on bag. Now, a lot of us are used to the 2D scanners that have a conveyor belt where you load your carry-on bag onto the belt. It goes through in a continuous motion. These create a 3D image of the bag. So a 3D scan, what does the passenger do in this situation? Rather than just drop your bag on the belt and walk down the line, what you do is put your bag and all of the loose items in one of those big, flat, gray bins. You load everything in there, and then you push it onto the belt, where it will go through the machine and then continue on through the process. So it's not very different from what we do now at the airport. But it is a new process. So with every new process, especially going through security, there is a learning curve. All right. So how are they designed to make for a better experience for travelers? So even if you're not in TSA PreCheck, you don't have to take your laptop or approved liquids out of your bag. I spoke to an airport CEO in Asheville, and he said the scanning process itself takes longer, but you're not doing all of that recombobulating after the checkpoint. But passengers are reporting longer waits in the lines. What's causing that? The actual scanning process can be slower. That's because the bag moves into the tunnel where it is scanned, and when that happens, it stops in order for a 3D scan to be created. So it's not the continuous motion that we saw with the prior 2D scanners. The bag is stopping in place. There have also been some technical issues with the scanners themselves, which have caused them to malfunction and go down. And we're seeing passenger traffic rise. Is that adding to this? Absolutely. So you introduce a new process and then you have more passengers trying to get through the lines, which just compounds everything. Now, a moment ago, you mentioned liquids. For about the past 20 years, you've only been able to bring a few ounces of liquid on a plane. Is that changing? It could. Right now, you are still only permitted to bring the approved small liquids in your carry-on bag. And they can stay in your bag if you're going through one of these CT scanners. But the technology is powerful enough that it can recognize which larger liquids are potentially explosives or dangerous, meaning that in the future, a goal is for everyone to be able to bring larger amounts of liquids through the scanners. Let me ask you another question about these machines. Can you describe what these new machines look like just so people can recognize what they're up against when they get into the line? They're very futuristic looking. Some are very big square openings. There's a brand called Analogic that many travelers have seen. And one person I spoke to described them as somewhat cocoon shaped. So they are white with circular tubes and a smaller opening that your bag goes through. Now, the TSA keeps pretty close tabs on wait times in the security line. What is it deemed to be acceptable? So TSA says that for the standard screening line, 30 minutes or less is their target. For pre-check, it's 10 minutes or less. And they say that current waits fall in those limits. 30 minutes is acceptable? Would people say give yourself some extra time? They mean it. Yeah, especially this summer with the record travel numbers. Wow. Now, these scanners are pretty new. And from an efficiency standpoint, could this be considered a work in progress for the TSA? You have a new scanner coming in that creates different backups in the line. So one thing that people reported is that rather than waiting before the body scanner to walk through, many people are now waiting after the body scanner because they're waiting for their bag to roll down the conveyor belt, which has caused some log jams on the other end. What can the passengers do to help move the line along a little quicker? Familiarizing yourself with the process, loading things into the bin. Do not put things like hats or shoes or other loose items on top of your suitcase. Those can fall off and jam the machine, which can cause it to malfunction. So make sure you're putting those under your suitcase. And then get to the airport early. It's something that we say all the time, but 
even pre-check members who I talk to who are frequent travelers are getting to the airport 30 minutes earlier than they used to this summer. Wow. So what's the big takeaway here about traveling by plane? We've all had some frustrations traveling, whether with flight delays or with crowded airports. Be as patient as possible and just try to plan ahead. I'm taking a flight in about a week and a half. I just fear that I'm going to have to pack a lunch to get in this TSA line. You might. Do you have pre-check? <laughs> I do, actually. Yes, I do. Well, that, that should help a bit. All right. That's Wall Street Journal travel reporter Allison Poley. And that's it for your Money Briefing. Today's show is produced by Ariana Osperu with supervising producer Melanie Roy. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Thanks for listening.